Hello everybody and welcome back at Adobe Live. I'm your host, Claudia, and I'm super excited to be here with you for a brand new episode of How To Graphic Design. During this hour together, we're gonna be learning how to create a fun character using Adobe Illustrator. And uh, I'm gonna show you how you can reference anything you want Today, we're going to use uh, our office dog, Bert, uh, to create a fun uh, um, character that you can use for your stories, for your illustration, for whatever you want. But first of all, let me welcome you here at Adobe Live. Uh, we had so much fun already today. If you are joining from behance.net slash live, make sure also to check out the brand new Adobe Live YouTube channel so you can find all the replays of this stream, the previous how to and many other streams that have been going on here at Adobe Live on the YouTube channel alongside so many exciting other streams. <clears throat> and also, if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget that uh, behance.net slash live is the chat that I keep my eyes on and keeping, oh, talking of chat, I'm so sorry, super hot in here. Uh, talking of chat, I want to say hello to everybody that is in chat here. Ben Levy, lovely to see you. Garrett, Mendewa, Frank, Frank Baum, lovely to see you. Carol, Cody, Barbara, what's up everybody? Let me know where are you watching from? I'm currently streaming from uh, the UK. During this month, I'm going to be streaming a little bit from the US. There is the exciting Adobe Max coming up. Have you registered? Have you registered? Let me know in the chat. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, make sure to join me in this journey because I'm about to show you uh, about uh, uh, Adobe Max, which is uh, the wonderful creative conference from Adobe that is going to take place both online for free. So I'm going to show you how you can register and take the most out of this fantastic, that is the conference, the creative conference of the year. And uh, as well, you can register and join and maybe meet me in person in LA because I'm going to be there very shortly. So let me make sure that I uh, see all the chat. If there is any question, this is a safe space. We have fun together while we learn how to use the wonderful Adobe apps. So make sure to type in. I love to see your love uh, for the stream. If there is anything that is not clear that you want me to go over, take advantage of this time together so we can learn together. Okay, Tony, lovely to see you. What's up, Tony? Harmer, my mentor and my dear friend. Uh, I cannot wait to see you, Tony. Tony is also a speaker at Adobe Max. Uh, so make sure, let me actually jump into my computer so we can talk about Adobe Max real quick before starting. In the meantime, we're going to be working in Illustrator. So if you are looking to join the stream and work along, make sure to open Illustrator while I take a minute uh, to go over Adobe Max because it's just a wonderful opportunity for you. Here we go. So max.adobe.com is the place where you can jump in and discover all the wonderful speaker and events that are going on, as I said, both online and uh, live in Los Angeles. This is actually the speaker page. If we go back into the main homepage, you also have the specific dates of the pre-conference, which I believe will only take place online 16th, 17th of October and 18th till the 20th, we have uh, the virtual and live conference in LA and also um, online on the Max website. You can register now. I know many of you asked me how to join my um, uh, and how to register to my sessions. You have two ways to go. One is to go to my website, iamclady.com, and then head to events. Max 2022 is the place where you can find a lot of information about what we're gonna be doing today, uh, sorry, uh, this year at Max. Uh, I have four different sessions and I'm also hosting the wonderful Spencer. I cannot wait to uh, for the time to come and to meet in person. Here you have more information, access to the outline. Um, and also, again, I, wanna, I will be, um, uh, hosting an Adobe Live as well and guesting an Adobe Live directly from Los Angeles, California. So don't forget to save your spot. Each one of these texts here with the, that is underlined is a link. Uh, you can also find more if you click on my bio. I have a lot of questions. Everybody's asking me, Claudia, where I can find your courses, where I can learn more about design, where I can register for Max. Everything is in my bio. I have something that is called a link tree. So whenever you click once on my link, there is actually multiple buttons that will allow you to do different things. So for example, here is the link for today's stream. So uh, you can actually access the stream, which is not what I want to do, <laughs> but it works. <laughs> uh, and uh, you can see the graphic design courses and this is the Adobe Mac Re Max registration. So it takes you right away on the page. You can also type my name. I'm so honored to be part of the featured speakers this year. So if you go on the main speaker page, boom, you'll find me there and here are all the courses as well. 
Fantastic, guys. It's time to get started. Um, lots of love for Tony. And also, Tony is not only my mentor. I was being selfish there. He's not only a, a, a mentor and an amazing Adobe wizard, uh, but he's also a wonderful speaker at Adobe Max, but a fun and amazing speaker here. He hosts many, many Adobe Live streaming from the UK. So thank you so much, uh, Tony. It's wonderful to have you here together. Perfect. So we, before we get started um, in Illustrator, I'm just going to give you like a sneaky peek. I was having a little bit of a play on the character. Uh, so I wanted to show you how to use any shape um, from a very simple shape. We're going to start from a, a, an ellipse and a square, combine them together, and then maybe something like a polygonal shape and move on into draw something like a cute dog. I know that usually with characters, we have persons. And here, this is what I call the expression zero so there is no movement in the eye there is nothing like you know um much going on this is kind of the flat expression here we can start add different eye movement and maybe a little bit of cheeky tongue out uh, but the most important things before you start drawing uh is of course to have some references uh, so you may have already a story and you're creating a character and actually let me know in the chat if you have ever drawn any character or if you are looking to if you're here for a specific topic or maybe you have a story and you're looking to draw a specific character for let me know in the chat i'm always very very curious uh to know what you're working on right now but as i said it's very important if you do not have a story maybe you're starting from scratch um to have some inspiration now there are different places where you can find inspiration one of them is in fact behance so let me actually uh go back to my browser because i want to show you i do use behance a lot uh for inspiration so if we go back here it's gonna just take us to the adobe live you're probably gonna see this is the cover of today's stream but if we head into the main behance page there is a search bar that allows you to actually search different things you can search project images people uh, in this case i'm looking for inspiration so all i'm gonna do is use some search word in this case character design maybe you can also use dog if that's what you're going for you don't have to draw a dog you can follow along and uh, use your own reference your own images so here is important to have an idea <clears throat> and also you can find more on adobe stock by the way i'm gonna go ahead and click on one of these so it opens up on another tab we're gonna talk about it in a second now the beauty of uh, working with uh, uh, this wonderful behance is that you will really have an idea of how oh, maybe in, uh, add 3d to your design so look at this so we have a really cool way of adding uh, features like the eye and the nose on separate layers and transform it into a 3d maybe we can do that look how cute is this birdie and not only you can have an idea on how to create a fun um, illustration and just you know reference the style of what you're looking for but also look at the uh, actual framing here we have a beautiful background which is blurred and really puts focus and the attention on this really really cute bird we have a lot of free space and negative space at the top that allows our eyes to fall straight away into this lovely bird and by the way let me give a shout out because i just uh came and clicked into uh, i think it's tiny climate climate is the name of the project it looks like a very complex project and in fact shout out to melu uh andrea rossi uh Joaquin, Victoria, we have a, a wonderful group of designer from Argentina, completely selected on random just because they're on Behance. So don't forget to post your work because next time it might be clicking on your profile. So don't forget to post your work. And not only uh, you can discover this wonderful work, but there is something that really speaks to you and you might wish to like integrate in your design. You will uh, at any point, look at this little lamb and the bee. We can have some animation as well. That is so cute. So what you can do here is simply uh, use the little save uh, folder, which allows you to save this specific uh, image into a mood board. In this case, I'm going to uh, open a new mood board. Mood board. I'm going to call it character and then click on create. And then once I have this new uh, library, this new folder, we can actually save as many images or project to that folder. So if I now go out of this wonderful project, amazing job guy, I love the colors. And uh, if we go back here, let's go back to our search. Uh, maybe we can open something else. Let's see if there is anything that we fancy. Uh, here they're all very beautiful by the way I'm just looking to see if there is any more pets and animals I'm looking for a dog in particular but if not let's see if we can add it in the um, in our search bar and what we can find there so 
Um, it looks like we have illustration. Maybe you can be even a little bit more detailed. Oh, let's see what we have a lot of doggies here, which is really cute. So maybe if that's what you're looking for, this is, looks like is a, an image from Adobe stock. So I actually clicked on the Adobe stock link. Uh, the advert works. <laughs> uh, but let's see here. We have more dogs. Oh, this is a very sweet and, and different way approach of design. Um, here we have some cats as well. Let's go ahead and click on this one. So all I want to show you here is that maybe you're ref referencing different art. Well, you can go ahead and save this image as well into your character mood board and click on save. So then when you access your mood board, you will be able to uh, see different images. In fact, if I go here on my profile, by the way, thank you so much for everybody that is writing. We can actually access this tab, which is called mood board tab. And this will allow you to search and to view all your different mood boards that you create. And from there, you can access the image that you saved. Fantastic. It looks like I didn't properly save the first one, but you get the gist. You can add as many as you want. So for perhaps I'm just going to add, let's add something different. So uh, we can see that and then we can jump back into Illustrator. Oh, I love this one. Sleeping dog. And actually I got something fun coming up for you. So for example, if you want to add uh, this other image there again click on save click on character and click on save again and now if we go back to our little mood board and maybe refresh and click on character you will see that automatically this new image has been added uh oh, that's so cute actually that's so fun sleeping dogs uh you can see that this image has actually been added to your mood board and that's great to keep references so those are stylistic reference that means that you can just simply you know have a look at what other people have done and take it as a reference if you're starting up and that will help you to build your style by iterate over and over again and simply by practicing and see what is more comfortable for you because what i'm going to show you is the simplest approach there is no excuse even if you cannot draw we're simply using um, shapes to create a wireframe of your design the blueprint of your final design so even if you don't know how to draw and maybe you know you you venture yourself into this example they're too complex for you well there is another wonderful thing that you can get reference from which is reality and i here collated for you some of the picture of our lovely office dog bert and uh, let's see if i can open it up here i haven't actually planned to open these into a gallery but let's see if I can open them all together um, here. Should have had them open. Maybe we can bring them in Illustrator as well. And this is another illustration that I've actually created in Fresco. Oh, that's my little kitty Kiki. <laughs> so maybe you can draw your cat. Look how cute she is. We have like a little triangle here, a little triangle there. It's really easy to find shapes within your design, starting by images. And that's me in the office, a normal day, having a nap with the lovely bird. A little bit more of our lovely bird. I kind of really like this image. I think that could be a really good reference. So I'm actually going to use, uh, maybe I'm going to take a screenshot right away that we can bring back into Illustrator. And here we have Frida. We need to give a little shout out to our little pets. Let me know in the chat if you do have any pets. That's me hanging out. See, that's what I say. Using reference just can inspire you not only for your design, the color palette, the shapes and so on, but also on moods. So look here, we have our little bird with his tongue out. Look how cute and fun it is. That's a great inspiration for your design. Colby saying, I love Boxer. How can you not love any of these wonderful dogs? Let me know which is your uh, favorite dog in the chat, by the way. Um, my favorite dogs are Shepherds. I love German Shepherds and Aussie she Shepherds. Of course, I love uh, our little Bertie Boxer. Uh, but I grew up with um, a Cavalier King Charts. It's called Spaniel. So a little doggy, which is really was really, really fluffy. And now I have two cats called Frida and Kahlo. So here we have my little lovely Frida and here we have my little lovely Kahlo here. Fantastic. So as I said, I have a collection of images. <clears throat> Not only they will allow you to get the shapes, get the color, uh, get an idea, but also you can get mood and also you can get details on different corners. So here maybe we can have a little bit of a better look of the nose, of the mouth and how to put these images together. Fantastic. And I think I have something uh, more fun for you to show. I think that's here. Little Frida and Carlo. This is the drawing of Bert that I've done using Fresco. You know, if I would have thrown you in something like that, maybe if you haven't drawn before, I completely understand that can be a little bit more complex. This is a painting that I've done using Fresco on iPad. But today, again, the goal of the stream is to really show you how 
And again, this is the most basic way we can use shapes to start to bring together a fun character that you can use maybe just to create stickers if you want. You know, if you have a mascot that represents your brand, this is a fantastic opportunity for you to learn how to draw it. And I'm probably going to try, I'm going to try to remember. Let me write it down because otherwise I always forget midstream sticker. Uh, let me know in the chat if you want to learn how to transform maybe into a sticker. So I'll probably take the last five minutes to show you this little extra. Uh, Barbara is saying, Frida looks like our Samantha. Ben, so you have a Frida Kahlo. Yes, I have Frida and Kahlo, but they go by Free Free and Kiki. <laughs> um, my sister got a wild one too. That's so cute. Assi Doodles, Assi Doodles, German Shepherd. Yes, absolutely. We're on the same page, Monica. Fantastic. So, Tony Armour as a farm. <laughs> Tony as two beautiful dogs, two beautiful cats. Um, I think some neighbor's llama at the moment. Lots of fishes. Three dogs. Three dogs. Oh my gosh. Tony has three dogs. Two Labrador and a lovely sausage dogs. I don't remember all the names. I'll be lying. <laughs> but Tony has a lot of uh, wonderful pets. And uh, I had the, the pleasure to be together with his family and with his pets. And it's such a beautiful, relaxed environment. So thank you so much, Tony. I really hope to come and visit you soon again. Fantastic. So let's get started. As I said, I had a little bit of a trick here. And this is actually Bert today. So I went to the gym during my lunchtime break because here right now is 8 p.m. So this morning when I was out, I actually uh, have a camera here in the studio. This is the same room where I am right now. And uh, I was like, oh, I wonder what Bert is doing because he's been alone for so long. Well, Bert was literally chilling on the couch, sitting down. And I have a mirror just opposite to the couch. So he was looking at himself in a mirror, modeling, because he knew that we we're going to use him for today's stream. So I thought that that was so funny. Perfect. So let's start by bringing in some images. As I said, this is just a reference that I've done real quick just to jumpstart the stream so you could have an idea on how the wireframe and the, the final design could work together. But I'm going to walk you step by step from the beginning. Roxy, Jesse, Buddy, Bilbo and Tilly. Roxy uh, and Jesse being the Labradors, Buddy being uh, the little sausage dog, Bilbo and Tilly being the cats. And of course, I'm talking about the loving four paws family from Tony Armour. Fantastic, Tony. Thank you so much for sharing all the names of your babies, which are really, really cute. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's get started by um, moving back into the welcome home screen from Illustrator. By the way, let me know in the chat uh, if you're watching on behance.net slash live. Remember, if you're watching on the YouTube channel, on the Adobe Live YouTube, I won't be able to read the chat, but you're very welcome to jump in there. Subscribe is a brand new channel and also uh, leave your comment uh, for later on or also save the stream to watch it on a replay. But for me to answer your questions, head to behance.net dot net slash live that is the place where you can actually type your question and i can look at them live so please let me know in the stream if you are a beginner or if you used illustrator before i'm going to try to break down this stream into digestible chunks so you can approach even if you're a beginner and you can join the stream although if you are uh, someone has already experienced with illustrator this is a fantastic opportunity to take your time and create a brand new portfolio pieces or something to explore maybe something different from what you've done before. As I said, you do not have to use the exact steps to create a bird dog or a boxer dog. You can create your cat, you can create a fish, you can create a human being, whatever you want. All I'm here to show you is that how you can easily achieve that. And with practice, you will find your way because the beauty of the app is that you can use it in many different times. And that's why I love Adobe Live so much because we have so many wonderful streamers. But let's go ahead and get started by clicking on the new file, blue button, and you will have our new document. Now, it's very important that here you set up your document for its final purpose. I always say fit for purpose is my um, main line when I open a new document because it's important to understand uh, what is the usage of your final file. If you're using this file maybe for print or for a sticker, you might want to go ahead and select print because that will be uh, the right tab. And by clicking on print, you will see that automatically Adobe Illustrator will change the settings of your document, in this case, into millimeters. We will have our color mode set to CMYK. This is cyan, magenta, yellow, K stands for black, which is the key colors in printing and 300 DPI uh, P 
PPI in this case, pixel per inch or uh, dot per inch, which is the standard resolution for a printed document. And this is default in the industry. Of course, if we are looking like in my case, I'm going to be using this illustration for um, a web project. So maybe just to put it on my Instagram and just to share it with the world. Maybe you can put it on your web page. You can use it for, for a logo, for whatever you want. But in this case, if you're looking like me uh, to work for screen, then do select web. The intent for web, if we click on the uh, web tab, you will see that automatically Illustrator will change the details starting from the units by changing them into pixels. And here you can also set the size of your artboard. In this case, I'm not particularly fast. I will select and create, a, you can uh, modify the artboards on Illustrator by using the Arbol tool. I will show you how to do that in just a second. All I want to do here is to name my file. I'm going to call it how to character. Uh, oops, forgot the H. And in this case, because we created and we pressed on the web tab intent for web. So we are creating an Illustrator document with the intent to export it for web. It's very important that you know what are the settings for such documents. Uh, although Illustrator is there to help you already because it's already changed the color mode into RGB, the additive color mode of red green and blue, which make up the white light uh, that are uh, light up our screens. And then we have our raster effect of 72 DPI. You can accommodate our retina screen uh, on our iOS by using increasing the DPI to 150. If that sounds like very complex for you, all you need to know that those are standard, uh, industry standard numbers. So it's not that I come up with it or I don't have any special powers by knowing, it's just by experience, you learn that those are the settings in order to create document that will look good uh, for your project. Let's see if there is any question. Um, hi, Stony. thank you so much for joining it. We have Joshua saying Illustrator uh, for a little while. Annika, lovely to see you in the chat. Uh, and we have my mom. <laughs> Ciao, Julie. Thank you so much for joining. Why aren't you sleeping? My mom is watching from Italy right now. That's so funny. Uh, Annika is saying, I'm on Behance. Uh, lovely to see you. Fantastic. Okay, so let's keep going. If you have any question, again, please feel free to use the chat. So now all we have to do is to press on create in order to open our document. And let's not forget that currently all we've done is to create a document, yet we have to save it. So you can press the command S option in order to save your document. Here you can choose in between a save it to Creative Cloud Library or save it to your computer, completely up to you. As you can see, you have right away an idea of the different benefits that you have by using the cloud document versus your computer. If you use the tablet, that's a fantastic way to jump across devices. Also, you can bring it in in different apps, have access anytime, anywhere um, from your apps. So as long as you log in with your Adobe ID, pretty much you have access to your files, wherever you are, independently from which machine you're using. Otherwise, if you like to work on remote, uh, you can go ahead and just simply click on save on your computer and that just can save it on whatever you want. In this case, I like to keep things in the desktop. So whenever we save or maybe if we have to go back, it's just easier for me to find um, my assets. Fantastic. So what I'm going to do now, every time that I start a project, there are two things that I do. Uh, of course, saving and then create a new library. Adobe uh, uh, Creative Cloud libraries are a fantastic service that comes along in each single app and allows you to uh, organize, group, browse, and share the assets of your project. And you can add images. In fact, right now, we're going to go ahead and add our cute Bert uh, photos there. So let me go ahead and select some of these cute images from Bert. And uh, all I'm doing here is first to create a new library. So click on the plus icon. I think I've done that without even showing you. And by the way, if you're new, I think there was some beginners in the chat. If you're new um, in the chat and if you are, uh, sorry, if you're new in Illustrator and you do not know, you do not see the Creative Cloud Libraries panel open inside your machine, all you have to do is to head into the Windows top menu located here. And you will find, sorry, I have a little bit of a cold and you will find uh, um, organized alphabetically all these wonderful panels. So uh, they're very neatly organized. So it's very easy for you to find the one that I'm looking for is library. As you can see, mine is ticked because the libraries are already there. So if I click on uh, uh, create new library, I'm going to do how to characters. And that's another advice. I tend to, to, to name my document and my library with the same name. So they kind of go together. Um, so how to character, 
will be the name of this specific library. And then here, all I have to do is to select the images and then simply drag them into the library. And now what the beauty of this is, is that I can actually bin these images so I can put it in the bin. I can be rootless and delete it from the bin. So I'm going to empty my bin. So they are completely gone. Are you sure? Yes, they're gone. And I know that I'm saving space inside my hard drive right now on my actual physical computer because I have the images here saved inside my Adobe server by using my library. So inside my library here, I have the little images from our little bird. They're not going anywhere. I'm never going to be losing them because they are saved and stored safely inside my library. By the way, you can also access your library from your Creative Cloud app. So if you wish, you can search from the Creative Cloud app and there under File and then your libraries. Again, here in alphabetical order, let's see if we go to the H real quick. Out of character. By the way, this is updated on the go. So as you can see here, I have access to my photos, um, which I can at the moment, if I double click because it's an image, it will open into Photoshop. I'm not going to use that for now. I'm actually going to close Photoshop because my computer is uh, a bit tired right now. So let's see and make sure that we close Photoshop so we can actually run Illustrator a little bit smoother. Here we go. Fantastic. So all I wanted to show you is that even if you uh, have some heavy images, you can temporarily store on your computer and bring it inside your Creative Cloud library. And by doing so, you will reduce the space that you're occupying on your computer because you can get rid of them. And not only you have it there available to access it from anywhere, like even on your mobile uh, apps, but you can also use the little share invite library to share the actual library with uh, anyone that you want. OK, but let's get started. So what I'm going to do here is to start by clicking and dragging and uh, bringing in uh, a little bird photo there. Now, if, as you can see, if you click and drag, you want to make sure that you hold the shift key, which I didn't do in order to constrain its proportion. Otherwise, what happens if I do not hold the shift key, I'm going to be distorting the photo, which goes against uh, literally the old scope of using the photo as a reference. Then in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and use the ellipse tool, which I trigger and select by pressing the letter L uh, on my um, keyboard. You can also access it here in the toolbar it is nested under the rectangle tool. So if you see the rectangle tool, simply click and hold on it in order to reveal the other shapes. We're going to talk about the other shapes in just a second and then click and drag to create a circle an ellipse. It doesn't really matter. All I want to do here is to hide everything that is not part of the image and have just the main reference, the main image showing through. Then I click and drag to select the shape and the image. Remember, the shape needs to be on top of the image for this trick to work. And use a magic shortcut command 7, that's control 7, in order to create what is called a clipping mask. A clipping mask is a shape, a vector graphics, that works as a frame, pretty much like a cutout, that will show through the part of the image that is actually inside the shape, it will hide everything that is outside the shape. So you're literally using the mask, the clipping mask to clip. It's like a folder. Imagine like if you have a piece of paper, maybe we can use like something that's, that's too small to, to use. I was trying to find some, something that we can use here, but it's literally like a frame. Everything that is inside the same, the frame, like the picture will show through from the cutout and everything that sits outside of your frame will be actually um, cut and hidden. And that's perfect because then you can also enter and modify the image as many times as you want. In this case, I can click and keep zooming in so I can focus only on bird face. And this is so exciting because it allows you to um, use images as references and at the same time, uh, pretty much getting rid of everything that is not useful for you. OK, so another thing that is very important to do when you're working in Illustrator is to take leverage the power of libraries. So LL, first the libraries, then layers. So first we use the libraries. Now we're heading into the layers. Layers are like containers. They allow us to drop different content inside each one of the layers uh, because, of course, you know, Illustrator uh, allows you to drop in content right away. We need at least one layer. So whenever you open Illustrator, you will always have at least one layer that sits there inside the layers panel. And it's usually just called layer one. You can rename this layer. I'm going to call double click on it to do so. And I'm going to zoom in so you can literally see what I'm doing there. And I'm going to call this one image. 
Now, I'm going to go ahead and uh, lock this layer and I'm going to use the little plus icon located at the bottom of the layers panel. Here it is. It says create a new layer because by clicking on this little icon, we can create one or multiple layers as many as you want. So usually I call my layer whenever I create a shape with an illustration. The first one, I call it wireframe. And this is the layer that will contain the main shapes. And uh, the reason why I do that is because if we head back real quick to the other, let me just name it. Um, and then click on OK. But if we head back to our previous design, so this is the actual wireframe. So the wireframe is actually um, the shapes and it, I like to keep a copy of it because if I then start to merge and we'll see we will use the shape builder tool, the pathfinder tool. If we start to merge images and, you know, maybe start to merge shapes and then I wanted to edit something, I will lose it. And what I used to do in the past is to create copies all over my artboards and that just becomes messy. Well, by using layers, we will have our settings and our content that stays in place, that is preserved, that we can use the lock to um, lock in order to preserve its editability, but also we can use the little eye icon. And let me show you here in order to hide it. So everything that is contained in that specific layer will be hidden once you click the little hide, uh, the little um, uh, eye icon. Sorry, I feel like <clears throat> I hope we can talk. I'm just getting a glass of water here. It's really cold in the UK. Let me know where are you watching from? And also um, if it's cold, if it's winter got there yet, Manchester looks like we're already in the middle of winter, like in a day. Okay, perfect. So Let's head back to our original document and uh, we're just going to start with organizing. I think there is a um, Sony saying, are there some resources on moving the files around in your libraries? Mine are really disorganized. Um, Sony, you can move. So, for example, if you have uh, these images and you want to bring it somewhere else, so let's go to another library here. Uh, let's see Instagram promo. Let's see. Maybe we want to add this photo here into my library. Well, all you're left to do is to click on it uh, and right click on it. And if you select on move to right there, by simply clicking on move to, it will just show you all the other uh, libraries. So here you will have access. Let me just see if I can move this around because it looks like it's hidden. Right click on it, move to, and let me zoom in so you can see it. So here, but if you click on the uh, back arrow, it will take you to all the list of library that you have. And in this case, let's go ahead and select our, they're in alphabetical order. So it's very fun and easy. Uh, you can always rename it at any time. Let's select how to character and click on move. And now once I head back into my um, how to character library, here we go. We have this brand new image, which I have no idea what it is. I think it's something, um, some food related images, some tea and cookies, which I will probably need right now for my, uh, for my bad throat, but is there. So it's very, very easy. Right click on the image, move to, move it to the library that you wanted to. And if your library needs to be renamed again, right click on it and you will be able to rename your library. So then it shows up in alphabetical order and it becomes super easy to move it. Fantastic. So we here, we created our layers. We have our wireframe and then I have my work in progress design and then I have my final. Now, something that is really cool for you to see is that the color of the actual uh, layers will matter because um, the the layers color, the this little color that you see here, will reflect into the bounding box of an object. So if I'm selecting work in progress and here I create a square, you will see that the bounding box is green. If I select wireframe, click and drag, the, the bounding box is uh, um, red and so on and so forth. So if you desire or maybe you know sometimes the colors can be yellow something that is not really visible maybe it doesn't work with your background you can always double click into your layers panel and from the preferences here you can change the color to whatever you want i think you can make up your own color it's super super easy literally to figure it out whatever color you want and whenever you're done simply click on okay and you will see that the color will change there which will also again reflect um on the bounding box right there okay so i think it's about time to start creating our shapes um for those of you that are joining us right now, we talked about inspiration. We talked about how to set up a document either for print and for web using Adobe Illustrator. We talked about the importance of using uh, real images as a reference for your design. We talked about Behance and how to gather inspirational um, images from the wonderful Behance community by using the mood boards and saving projects inside your 
um, inside your profile using the mood board tools or feature, whatever it's called, in Behance. I think everybody is excited to to see puppies. I haven't seen in the chat if you guys if there are many like pet lovers. Let's see. Let me know in the chat if you do have any pets. I'm always super excited to see. But fantastic. So let's start and move on. Now the boxer face has a very specific face because it's not it's, it's not round. You know, usually the ellipse tool would be. Uh, and let's let's go ahead actually and make sure since we've been so. Uh, neat and organized to use our layers that we are actually using our wire frame which will hold our initial frame so the usual frame that is used for heads as a reference is usually uh, the ellipse tool so you can go ahead and select the ellipse tool press the letter d to have the default color which is a white fill and uh, um, a black stroke so you will see right away here at the fill a stroke control if we press the letter d the white fill and the black stroke will uh, show up this is the default color you can still can select the fill making sure that that is uh, um, again selected and then press either this little icon look at it, the bottom of the stroke and fill just up on my head there not the gradient here where it says none in order to make your um feel transparent so when we start to overlay stuff they don't hide each other it's very common whenever you create using shapes that you have the white field that will overlap onto other shapes and then you get lost and you don't find your items and we have our little cutie bird face there so you can also use the forward slash real quick as a shortcut in order to do so and as i said here um don't forget to hold that shift key to hold your proportion to create a circle circle rather than an ellipse but it's absolutely up to you so this is the usual starting point for heads depending if you're creating a character which is a human which is a bird which is a pet whatever you want but i do think that um little boxers have a very specific face because they have almost like this hexagonal or pentagon shape so how do we very quickly achieve that well let me show you you can go ahead and select the shape here and then we have our polygonal tool or polygonal tool i'm sure that my italian accent will mess this word up uh, and from here you can click and drag and you will see that the default polygon is an hexagon there so uh that shows and says that basically the shape has uh six different sides and that's if you want the way that you want to keep it but otherwise there are so many wonderful things that you can do by using uh polygon properties so if you go ahead and uh, i think that not many people what carol is saying about a cat sorry i got distracted because i just read in the chat that's my my best cat ever jack has two dogs and two cats uh carol is saying my cat named goldie uses the toilet that is so funny Carol, do you have it on Instagram? Because I want to check it out. If you go into my Instagram feed, it's basically cats, dogs, and some design. <laughs> I'm just joking. Look at lots of design and lots of dogs and lots of cats, of course. That would be so funny. Okay, so what I was going to show you here is a feature that, again, is not um, used very often, but I think is really cool, which is uh, uh, the properties panel. So the more properties here if so if you go ahead and select more uh um more options sorry i'm just looking at the chat real quick carol just a photo um send me dm me on instagram my instagram is i am claudia and by the way since i'm there i'm just gonna real quick jump into my instagram uh, if you look or if you like one minute tutorials, I'm actually building a library of one minute tutorials. So if you go ahead and follow at I am Clady or message me, you can access uh, Photoshop and Illustrator for tutorial. We have a little bit of Adobe Express and font as well. Uh, and in one minute, you will learn how to uh, create a project or how to do something using the apps. I think it's really, really cool there. I mean, a, a really good feedback. Let me know in the chat if there is anything that you want to know. Uh, I will be happy to use it uh, for the design here, for the for the tutorial. But let's go back. So once you select your polygonal shape, doesn't matter if you're, how many sides it has, if the standard is six, if you use another one before, probably will retain the same number of sides. But with your shape selected, if we head to the properties panel here and click on the more option three dots located under the transform section of the properties panel, you will see that here we have all these fun tools that will allow us most importantly to change the size of our polygon in just a click. So if you already uh, drawn your shape, you can at any time change their side. And I think the Pentagon is what suits best our little 
a bird dog there. And then you can have control over the corner. You can round the corner if you want, but I'm going to set it back to zero because I want to show you another method to round corner. You can also rotate your shape and so on. And you can also decide if whenever you scale your image, you're going to scale corners and also the stroke and the effect that you will apply to it. So I think that that's a really hidden uh, cute feature that is very useful for designing. Now, the reason why I wanted to show you how to use uh, the widget tool for corners rather than the actual properties panel is because by pressing the letter A, which is our direct, direct selection tool, you can actually click on each one or maybe multiple ones. So we're going to have this one and then hold shift and this other one in order to select the corners that you would like to independently change. And it will give you uh, more flexibility. So look at that. We are shaping our Pentagon into the perfect Bertie face, uh, uh, boxer face or whatever you want to call it. But the cool fact is that look at this, like you're literally, let me go ahead and change these to white from our properties panel. I'm going to make my stroke white for just a second, just because I want to overlap it on the actual bird face, because that's, that's something that you can start doing. I, that's when I started uh, drawing myself, I will I'll tend to like draw on top of the photos. And then just to give you like an idea of the actual proportion. So maybe something else that I want to do here. And again, look, look, the beauty of using the layers, because we've locked the image, I can go ahead and click and drag over uh, this little stroke that I have here and the image will not be disrupted. Again, if you're looking and wondering why that is, it's because we locked our layer. So our image layer is preserved and we can click and drag and do all sorts of things and activities on it and uh, we will not change our image. So here with the direct section tool, you can click and drag the anchor point that make up uh, this little image. And in literally a few steps, we draw quite a complex shape that matches perfectly our little bird face there that is so cute and I'm gonna go ahead and again uh, press the default to make it uh, black and with a white feel and then the forward slash in order to hide um, the feel the, the white feel and then I'm gonna make my stroke a little bit bigger now remember it doesn't really matter here at this point the stroke I can't believe time goes so fast um, you can go ahead and uh, start to you know use whatever color you want you don't even have to use a blessed stroke it just because I use it for the wireframe. Some people use blue, whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. Okay, but let's keep moving on because I want to show you like the old purpose here is really how to show you how to use shapes in a creative way so you can adapt it to your to your design. Now I'm going to jump in into the eye uh, because usually eyes again, like I just want to push away from the round. So you can just simply click on the ellipse tool and simply create an ellipse to create uh, an eye if you want to, or a little circle. But what if we think a little bit more creatively, especially like little uh, boxer dog, they have like a little bit of like, I think it's called droopy like, but they have these eyes that like tend to fall a little bit down. So they have a circle shape and then they have the little like cute side. I know because I look at little Bertie in the office all the time. So it's not a perfect circle. It's like almost like an almond shape with a little bit of a lower uh, rounded circle there. So in this case, look at that. I'm going to actually start from a square. I'm going to go ahead and click and drag to create a square. And then I'm going to press the letter V to uh, use our selection tool and click and drag our square on the side. So I'm selecting the square. You will see if you zoom in here by hovering on one of the corner and using the shift key to rotate. I'm just going to go ahead and transform my square into a diamond shape. And here I will use the direct selection tool to start moving this corner. And you see what's happening here. We're literally evolving from our original square and we are creating the shape of an eye really quickly. And that was a square, guys. Like literally a second ago, there was a square and now it is just a cute eye that we can use for our lovely puppy dog. Perfect. So what I tend to do here is then always keep things to proportion. That's why I like to uh, use the mask like I showed you at the beginning. So you can have an idea of uh, the actual size that you're working on. And now before we move forward, I'm just going to go ahead into the appearance panel and make the stroke. I'm, I'm going to make all stroke back to one just because it's a little bit easier here now to, to see what we're doing. In this case, I'm going to now be using the ellipse tool in order to create a circle, which is going to sit inside my little shape there of the eye and they will make a little bit more sense. So literally we're using a square, a modified square and a, a circle in order to create my eye. And here I'm going to create, a, I'm going to use the option key to create that little eyelid there because got a little bit of a sleepy eye with a little eye, eyelid coming down there. Perfect. 
And here, I'm gonna show you the power of using wireframe. So into my wireframe layer, I will leave my eye looking like that. But into my work in progress, and I'm just gonna go ahead to make sure that everything is aligned losing the align option. I wanna press the command C in order to copy this little layer here. And I'm gonna go into the work in progress and hide the wireframe. I press command F to paste in front this little, uh, uh, mix of, of shapes that we have and I'm going to introduce to you the shape builder tool. The shape builder tool allows you to create a new shape as the words say to build new shapes simply by clicking and dragging on them. So in this case if you just simply click on this shape you will create a brand new shape here which I'm gonna um, fill into black. Oops let me make sure that I select only the brand new one that I created which is uh, we can use for our eyelid. And what about these uh, part that comes down that we do not want to use. Well, if you select all the shapes, again, with the shape uh, builder tool, if you hold the alt option key and then hover, can you see here we have a little highlighted dotted area. If you hold the option key and click on it, you can actually access the erase mode of the uh, shape builder tool that in this case will allow you to deselect. So uh, to erase any part of the object that you do not want. Here still we have our circle. We probably can move it a little bit there. But what happened if you at some point decided that, that eye wasn't, you know, wasn't looking good, it wasn't the right eye that you wanted to use? Well, that's not a problem because we always have our wireframe layer that will allow us to um, use our our little eye. And I'm gonna go ahead because we need to move fast. I can't believe the time is running so much. I'm just gonna go ahead and paste our little uh, dog face into the wireframe, into the work in progress as well. So now you can see if I hide the wireframe, I already have the little Bertie eye over there. Perfect. I'm gonna move a little bit faster here and again, use my little square uh, in order to create the nose. Again, the corner feature is really amazing. And in this case, I'm gonna select both the top corner. You can either select the actual anchor points or you can select the um, corner widget. That's absolutely up to you, but that will allow you to create a little nose. Let's see what shape do we want for the nose. Uh, maybe maybe we can actually start from a rectangle. Sorry, a triangle, so we can use a little a new shape, which is our star. If you click and drag on the star, and then use the top and bottom arrow, it will allow you to choose different um, sizes for your triangle, which we then we can rotate. And again, using the widget tool that uh, we have access with any of our live shape. And by the way, they're called live shape because we can keep modifying them over and over again. We can start and uh, change our little. Um, shape of the of the uh, triangle into uh, our little nose, bird nose. Okay, so what if we need something a little bit more uh, smooth for something like ears? Maybe you want to try to give it a go a little bit of a freehand. Well, in this case, I will advise you to start and I'm going to go with the um, pencil tool. The pencil tool is also located into your toolbar. Very easy to identify. It just looks like a pencil. What I would suggest though before uh, going is to double click on it in order to access the fidelity. In this case, I'm using the trackpad of my laptop. So make sure to change your uh, fidelity, fidelity to smooth in order to create smooth line. By the way, the time has been going so fast. Am I going to have to create a part two of this stream? I really wanted to give you a good introduction in how to create uh, your little illustration. So hopefully uh, you guys have find it useful anyway. And as you can see, the smooth tool really will allow you to create a little bit of a smooth design. You can also delete it at any time. And again, press the letter N to access the smooth tool and click and drag in order to create your little ears here. Um, there we go. So that probably could work. And uh, again, here you can always press Command C, Command F to paste and use our properties panel to flip it around and then move it around our shape. And as you can see, in just a few steps, we're nearly there. I think uh, we really need to bring in some of the little boxer cheeks. And maybe here I can start from a rectangle. Again, using the corner widget, I'm going to start and use the top one to really create like an arch for our little doggy here. And then we're going to do the same for the bottom. And then what I can do here maybe is also um, add a little bit of a uh, anchor point so you can always integrate new points inside your shape that will allow you to edit your shape. I really wanted to show you the Papa Warp tool, but it doesn't look like we have time today. Um, I'm probably going to do a part two. Let me know in the chat 
if you um, if you want a part two of this one because there is a, a little bit still to go again the idea is just to give you a general idea for you on how to use a shape to create a design but I really wanted to cover so much more so let me know in the chat if that's something that you will fancy doing because I really would love to talk to talk to you more about design but again here I'm just simply gonna go and select my little uh, rectangle tool which is the letter M in order to create these little vertical shapes because we know that like we have our little nose here it kind of have a vertical line that goes in between and maybe we can create another a uh, bigger feature here for the mouth because usually they have like a darker color on top and as you can see we've been using just a few shapes but we already started to uh, see our little doggy come out I'm going to show you how adding a um, anchor point and I'm just going to take my time here although we're running out of time by pressing the letter P we access the pen tool and if you see if now that I hover on an existing path once see here that's just an X that's the pen tool that will allow you to create path just like so that you can actually build bespoke shape with but if you hover on an existing shape uh, if you select it first press the letter p and hover on it the plus icon will come up and that will allow you to add new anchor points so new points that you can use to modify for your shape in this case i've added these two at the bottom i'm so zoomed in that i'm not exactly i don't know exactly where i added them but you can always modify them and you can actually use them to change the shape of your design so again we started just from a pentagon and now we added even more um, sides and we're making this design more complex as we go in just a few clicks so just real quick here we were able to oops we we're able to modify the uh, end of the, our little dog so that's our uh, wireframe and work in progress i'm gonna press command c and create a copy and quickly move into my final because i literally have a minute to go i don't know how am i gonna do this uh, and then simply what i'm gonna do here is just to start to select my shape and add to my swatches panel in order to assign a color so maybe we can give the here like a dark brown color and maybe we're gonna keep these elements white um, and we're gonna assign them like um, maybe like a white feel but the stroke we're gonna set it to none and here we're still gonna make it dark brown by the way what I tend to do here is to click and drag and choose draw behind uh, from the toolbar in order to create a background I'm just gonna make it something like blue or whatever with something that we can see um, behind here we go uh, and then if you're missing some shapes like here it looks like we lost the nose because I've decided to fill in the color first of the little um, of the little dog mouth you can always enter the outline mode by using the command Y that is control Y uh, on uh, Windows and then click on it and this will show you the outline of your shape that exists inside your artboard you can always switch between normal view and the little outline and that is so useful when you're looking for a specific shape and you can always use the shortcut uh, command shift right bracket in order to bring it to the top just like so again I'm gonna um, make this brown as well this um, maybe dark black uh, sorry dark brown dark black <laughs> and then I'm gonna do the same with the eyes now don't forget that you want to have the fill on the foreground in order to make sure that you use the fill correctly oops we moved our eyes which is something that that will that's what we like to do in part two like in part two I would like to show you how to add you know different characteristic to your little illustration um, so you can bring them up oops I've just literally got two minutes and if you guys know you've been with me before this is when I start to freak out and start to click things around and everything seems to go wrong but in reality I'm just you know um, clicking around in uh, inside the app uh, but here it is so it looks like it's actually taking shape what I'm doing here is selecting the shape and then if you press the little um, stroke and then press the foreground you will be able to um, move your shape around it looks like the ear uh, I've not done a fantastic job with the ear probably we need to make it a little bit smaller this looks so much better there command C command F to paste and then we have our little um, flip horizontally from the properties panel okay I think that like for the time that we had this is a good start again probably what I will do here is to work a little bit more on the eyes um, and I will start by grouping elements and you can add you know little features uh, like a little tongue sticking out or maybe you know you can start to add 
I use the ellipse tool to start to get some details inside the eye, just like so. Um, and you can start to create more and more. But unfortunately, it's time to go. I cannot believe it. Uh, that is already time to go. Uh, I wish we had much more time to play together uh, in order to create more details here. And look like just by adding this little light refraction already, how it makes a difference in your design. Let me zoom in so I can actually duplicate it and just create another one, make it a little bit smaller. And again, I tend to do usually these uh, detail um, on one eye first and then just simply duplicate it on the other one. Something else that I would have done here perhaps uh, will be to um, have our little eyes a little bit bigger. So you can go ahead and select and deselect any other shape that you do not want and then just use your... Um, you know, feature here to make your eyes a little bit bigger. I, I think it's a good start. Uh, proportion maybe needed to be worked out a little bit more with the ears, with the head. Uh, but I think that that's a lovely start. And I'm actually going to use this last minute to do something funky here. I'm actually going to select my little bird head and group it together and bring it to the back. Maybe not to the full back. Look how cute it is, even in blue. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and... Oops unlock all object because I think that I did lock this background. So what I want to do here is to show you something real quick. In one minute, we can do it. If we select the 3D and materials and select on inflate, you can actually add 3D perspective to your design. Isn't that super cool? You can just start to transform your design by adding 3D feature simply by heading to the window menu, 3D materials, and then using the little inflate, uh, which add uh, shadows and lights to your image giving this uh, 3D preview. Unfortunately, it's time to, uh, to say goodbye. I can't believe this stream has gone so, so fast. I look forward to see you very soon for a brand new episode of How To. And don't forget to tune in. Uh, we have our lovely Annika uh, with a brand new stream in Let's In Design. Uh, and uh, that's it for today. And I look forward to see you very soon here on Adobe Live. Bye-bye, everybody.